Hi and welcome back. Time for another art challenge. Here, uh, today I'm using Liquitec Basic and I'm using that's my tear off palette. Acrylic paper from Hannah Muller. We'll get that soon fixed. And while I tape up my paper here and start painting, I'll explain the art challenge. It's Dana Tullison. And thank you very much, Dana. This is my third time participating in Dana's uh, art challenges. How Dana normally do these art challenges is that she gives the participants a word of prompt uh, and it's usually a subject of sorts and a color. So last time it was a dog and red. So you could you can do whatever art piece you like because it's not limited to paintings. You can do whatever kind of art you want as long as you last time it was feature a dog or the color red so I did a dog with a red ball did both um, this time it is called underwater art challenge and um, it's the, the the description is underwater living or above on the surface or by the water as long as it's kind of something with with living with water and um, yeah um, no color this time so it was a free choice but a very broad description and if you click the hashtag uh, Dana is making uh, a video list of the participants uh, artwork so you can see what a lot of other people do with this challenge and it's quite fun. Uh, it, half the fun is to create your art and the other half is actually to see what other people got out of the challenge. It's, it's, it's great. And um, Yeah, so um, I had something else planned entirely. But... Um, and I actually filmed it, and I absolutely hated everything about it. Um, so I, I kind of put it aside. I actually filmed my first attempt, like the day after Dana gave us the the challenge. And I just put it on the back burner. And I was looking through, uh, Unsplash for something else, and I came across a photo of a, blow up flamingo. Uh, and I had another, uh, what's it called, reference photo of a seagull, and I thought, oh, I'll take the seagull and put it on the flamingo, and I'll send those two out to see the sea. So that's the title of this one, it is Out to See the Sea. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm a watercolorist normally, so this thing about using acrylics is a challenge for me still. Uh, it's not my first piece with acrylic, uh, but um, I'm still at a phase where it is a challenge for me to, to use acrylic. And I'd have to say this, uh, li this Liquitec Basic paint was challenging my patience. Uh, the what? See, I didn't pay much attention to my outline when I painted the sky, which I actually hate. Um, and then when I started painting in my subjects here, that blue kept on shining through because they're quite uh, transparent. I got other student grade uh, acrylic paints and they are not as transparent as this. And they flow better. This uh, it really just sticks to my brush. It don't want to come off, which is uh, quite a problem when trying to create details. Uh, I really struggled with that. So this is not gonna be my favorite paint. I'm I'm gonna use it up, uh, no matter. But I'm not buying it again. So yeah, testing if it's dry really had to put some layers on that seagull before it was kind of proper white and also had to paint a, a few extra layers on the flamingo to get it proper pink you can still kind of see the the blue a little bit through it um, 
part of the, the pink problem was that I used Grenacridone Magenta to mix the pink with and that is not the paint's fault but, but that pigment is translucent though. Uh, so so that didn't help but the white is also not very opaque in, in this paint line so and here I'm struggling with the beak of the, the because that yellow ochre just won't let go of my detail and it's a tiny little detail with not very many hairs and they're pr pretty stiff so it should be possible to get paint off but it just stuck to my my brush so I ended up kind of just dabbing it on and the same with the feet I'm using yellow ochre for that as well um, at this point I am sitting and thinking yeah okay I'll just kind of finish it then bin it and, and then <laughs> draw the whole thing up on watercolor paper and, and do a watercolor painting but um, I decided to stuck, stick with it and I stuck with it and the end result was okay it's not super fantastic but it was okay and I as I was getting more and more used to the paint I had more fun and this brush just died on me the yeah bye bye <laughs> the ferula came off and I, I, I tossed it I didn't try to fix it because also actually the the tip of it wasn't pointy enough so here we are trying to do some details because that is kind of a plastic blow up floaty thing and it has this seam and some folds and I'm trying and because I can't get things to blend as I want to because oh yeah now I'm ragging on on the, the paint it also dries incredibly fast also faster than any of my other acrylic paints so blending you have to be extremely quick and I'm not this is sped up to 700% by the way so um, yeah but um, and down here where you can't see it is the last third or so of the the paper my sketch didn't fit the paper particularly well so um, yeah here I'm sitting thinking about what to do what to do because uh, I had originally planned actually to crop it pretty tight uh, so it would be kind of a square painting yeah, I'm trying to do some reflections and shading here and because I can't get it the way I want I kind of smear the paint out a little bit with my fingers I'm bad at that you should see me with oil pastels oh my gosh or soft pastels so I decide well we gotta have something in the foreground here and yeah I'm painting a big triangle of dorsal fin here and I'll leave it up to you guys to decide what kind of an a creature that is it's kind of dark so it might be an okra and, um, put in a, a little more dark gray in there than I wanted but I hope that that transparency of the the paint would allow it to shine through to indicate it in the water I have to go in and give it some more so there we go a little extra mix it in a little bit with the green as well starting to learn a little bit of, of, about using acrylics I, I really need to do that a lot more use it more it is so different than painting with watercolors it's incredible so yeah deepening up those screens trying to make a little bit of distance in there with a by darkening up the green in between them so yeah this is where I started having fun I tried to make a highlight on the front of that dorsal fin there but it again the paint wouldn't let go of my brush so 
I ended up just doing spatters. Uh, some highlights here and there. I would have liked to, to go in and do some more with the head of that flamingo because it's kind of two dimensional. But I don't. Instead I decided that that sky was something I will try to save. Um, and I liked it better after I painted a, a new background on here. Now the thing about taping the paper to my work mat there, my cutting mat, is that I can when I normally work and I haven't taped down my paper is that I turn my paper so that angles and stuff fit with my my hand position but I can't when it's stuck so yeah um, I'll let you see if you notice what what the solution to that problem was um, so I managed to kind of paint around it and also getting a paler background helped because it gave me it wasn't all just mid-tones anymore. Got some darks and some lights. And even though it wasn't in terms of highlights and shadows, it, it, it helped it to bring things out a little bit more. Yeah. Be careful around that outline. I actually fixed an outline error I had there. And here, yeah, I'm taking excess paint off the big brush with a detailer to paint in between his legs and stuff. So, yeah. Broken brush. That doesn't happen often. Um, yeah. Considering more paint. But no. No. Now comes soon. I'm waiting for paint to dry actually. And I have sped this up but it is a little long anyways. So I'm debating with myself what to do next. And I should really have put some shading and highlights on that head but yeah. Spoiler. It doesn't happen. The next thing is to tear the not tear, but remove the the tape. And that proved actually a challenge because um, it uh, the tape tears um, as I take it off. Come on, get at it already. Don't sit there chit chat. Yeah, here we're trying to lift it off. Yeah. That piece there was the piece that tore when I was putting it on. It also won't let go. I can't tell you what brand it is, but... Um, yeah. There we go. That side looked decent. There's something satisfactory about having those messy tape edges. And... Uh, and then when you pull the tape off, you have that cream crisp edge most times. Oh yeah, um, tear away from the paper, not into it. Yeah, now you lift it to paint off. Yeah, try from the other side if you can get a grab. Uh, it's a little off camera. And it tears and I have to pick at it to try to get it. There we go. Yeah, and I'll take off that paint there. I feel like a oops. I gotta, I gotta uh, I'm gonna trim it later on. So it won't matter. Uh, and it tears again. I figured out to tear away from the paint now. And I just got a thousand pieces, come on! And the 
paint ran in underneath the, the tape there, so that edge is also not as crisp as it should be. But hey, we got a painting, finally. And when I've done all this ripping and tearing, I'll show you the full painting. I quite like how the composition came out um, and the color choices and stuff. But it was a struggle, this was a challenge. Thank you for watching. Please throw me a like and a subscribe and come back. I do paintings and drawings and art supplies and art challenges. Bye.